Tonight at 9.30pm GMT over on the Cthulhu Kin and Friends show, I shall be doing a stream responding to Prime Minister's questions. As the speaker has taken a considerable amount of backlash from members of the public for his stance on the bill being brought forward, the Brexit bill, and the Prime Minister supposedly looking for only a short-term extension to Article 50, which may well get vetoed by one nation, I believe Italy. It should be rather interesting to see what transpires. One can only hope Corbyn absolutely decimates her, if only because of how utterly stupid she is, and not because I'm throwing my weight behind Corbyn, who an article recently surfaced is apparently considering retiring because he's getting bored of frontline politics. Moving on, we're going to talk about the porn ban, or the porn license, whatever you want to call it. I assume that was enough to get rid of the ads on this video. Doesn't matter really, does it? Now back in December of last year, there was an article written by The Sun. It indicated that porn websites will be asked for proof of age from April 2019, which is of course not long away. Now, this basically means that those who watch it, watch smut, filth, porn, classy ass, will need to prove their age with a driving license or an age verification card. The ban was originally approved by the House of Commons as part of the Digital Economy Act. Now, we can all thank the Conservative Party for this, because it wasn't that long ago, I think six years ago, that David Cameron first posited the idea of banning pornography or banning quite a considerable amount of it to stop children from being able to access some of the more grotesque pornography or just all of it. Because what is and is not grotesque is up for debate, and certainly that could be interpreted as anything past two people laying together, not even touching. That would be considered acceptable pornography, maybe the way the continuum mate with just their index fingers perhaps being the preferable way forward. It is well established that in the United Kingdom, a considerable amount of porn that could be made in the UK is banned. In fact, I might be right in saying the only thing that is acceptable to be made in the UK pornography quotes industry would be continuum mating, or just watching two pandas cuddle, because let's face it, they're not gonna fuck. Now, to briefly summarise what the Digital Economy Act is, I'm not going to recite it, because I noticed Sargon covered this very video, or topic, but he did, in fact, address the Digital Economy Act, and I hope he doesn't mind, I'm going to play a clip from his video of that reading. The Digital Economy Act of 2017 has a much greater reach than just pornography, but if we look at Part 3, which is the Online Pornography section, we can at least take a look at their reasoning. For example, they describe pornographic material as material that was produced solely or principally for the purposes of sexual arousal. That is a reasonable definition of pornography. While part of this act is indeed to restrict access to pornography to people who get their porn license, that's not the only thing that it does. Another part of it is to restrict extreme pornographic material just universally, so no one has access to this. Well. What do they think extreme pornographic material is? Because I have a funny feeling that the Conservative government and the rest of the country might have a slight difference of opinion on that. So I bet this is very clearly defined, isn't it? From Section 3, Parts 22. The meaning of extreme pornographic material. In this part, extreme pornographic material means whose nature is such that it is reasonable to assume that it was produced solely or principally for the purposes of sexual arousal and... Which is extreme? Good summary. Good summary. Thankfully, they actually define what extreme means. For the purposes of subsection 1b, material is extreme if its content is described in section 63.7 or 7a of the Criminal Justice and Immigration Act 2008, it is grossly offensive, disgusting, or otherwise of an obscene character. Well, doesn't that just put my mind at rest? Because it turns out the Digital Economy Act is an extension of the 2003 Communications Act. And it's the 2003 Communications Act that introduced the concept of gross offence into British law and contains the only single reference of it to my knowledge, which is in section 127, which is uploading grossly offensive content to the internet, which was what Count Dankula was arrested under. Now we have a second example of something that constitutes
being grossly offensive. And we are left with the exact problem that we had the first time around, which is who decides what grossly offensive actually means. Link to that video and of course his channel, because he's massively undersubscribed at 923,000. I mean, that's nothing below, in my mind, with the ridiculous restrictions placed upon us with what we can film, considering so many of them are, let's face it, natural processes, an orgasm being one of them. Although I guess because we're British, we, we don't generally, you know, want the whammon to come. That is haram. With this in mind, all of this in mind, and this utterly pathetic system being brought into place, I think it wise if we point out that people are going to be directed to pages to fill in details, to provide proof that who they are are possibly going into a shop to be able to access Pornhub, YouPorn, browsers, or whatever site it is people use, X Hamster, X Videos, or Roaming Millennials Channel. The key talking point that I earlier mentioned about David Cameron talking about protecting the children, when someone please think of the children, just not in pornography seriously. The NSPCC are the ones that are championing this, but they don't believe that the current and the soon to be introduced measures are preventative enough, or they don't go far enough to protect the children. With a spokesperson saying, Robust age verification and regulation for online pornography are important first steps in keeping children safe online. But these steps do not go far enough. The NSPCC is calling for social networks to be required by law to give under 18 safe accounts with extra protections built in, so that children are kept as safe online as they are in the real world. If that is how you are so naively putting it, might I point out, children are hardly safe in the real world. And what is and is not real now, one could argue, and I'm going to put this out there for that kind of context thing, internet friends can still be argued to be real friends. They can be a support network. Therefore, what is and is not safe in the real world and online could be regarded in a similar stance, on a similar stance, or in, on, doesn't matter. You understand what I mean? Now I bring all this up, and we're going to transition to another thing, because I'm wondering if this will affect the very recently released, addressed, put out their publicised ethical porn films that are being made by mothers who are worried about the effects of hardcore films on their children. I would assume this is all going to be very, very realistic, which is what they want to promote, along with a positive attitude towards sex. I would point out, hardcore films are a positive attitude on sex. They take it to an extreme level, some do. That is the whole thing. It's positive. It's not there to hurt somebody watching it unless the intent is for them to rip their cock off. In which case, possibly, that could be considered harmful. But then again, that is entirely down to preference. Everyone has one. And I would also point out, you are hardly innovating on the subject of what is and is not realistic. Because that genre already exists. It is called amateur. I thought maybe you would like to know this. I know not everyone owns a fuck machine, and I know not everyone owns several black guys to utterly destroy them, because that would be pretty illegal. Not the banging part, the owning of another person. So perhaps to the mothers who are creating this realistic smut, I might point out, it exists already. Which, by the way, handily leads me onto something that cropped up while I was busy collecting sources for this. Someone pointed out to me that in the Ukraine, there's gotten so progressive with consent, you need explicit and or physical consent. Some going so far as to say they have to fill in paperwork to consent, which I have the law linked below. It does translate on Chrome. It is actually written there, explicit and or physical. Sweden are also the same. Some would argue this is a progressive thing. I would argue, yes, it is progressive, but it is also quite a step forward in the sense that Simply getting verbal consent is not enough, because now you have to prove that consent came from somebody who could, in fact, consent by filling out some paperwork. I'm not sure about anyone else, but I can't imagine many erections last after filling in an application form. I just wanted to point it out, really, and as we're on the subject of smut for a totally advertiser-friendly video, it seems like the right time to bring it up. Which handily leads us on to the last thing related to sex. This thing here. It's called the cock cam. You attach it to your penis and you have at it. Because nothing screams I love you more than being able to watch back your balls slapping someone's ass. Or their chin. Hmm. I think we're done here. If I don't see you tonight over on the Cthulhu Ken and Friends show, I hope you all have a lovely Wednesday. 
and thank you all for listening.